Hello my soccer universe. Well, second to last day of group play and while the real drama was not yet there, there was quite some at least one exciting game tonight. Um, that is probably the game of the World Cup so far, uh, especially the way it went. I'm wearing England. England did not have any bigger trouble with Japan. That was actually one of those matchups that I was looking forward to when I saw the draw because I thought that Japan is a little bit more competitive than they proved to be. Yes, they gave England a little bit of trouble. There was a free kick in the, I think, ninth minute or so that the goalkeeper could just uh, uh, guide to the crossbar or the corner. I think it was even deflected by the wall, but just at that point, I mean, Japan started out there, you know, intricate passing game, a little bit going forward, but just when you thought, yes, now they have it, England strikes back uh, through Ellen White, who pretty nicely chipped it after a nice through ball. Ball gets the ball close to the box, makes a few steps, and then chips it over the goalkeeper into the net. Um, defender never gets to it. England should have made it 2-0 before the half. They were then really, really dominant. I think Japan barely got a foot on the field at that point, any, uh, at, at least. The one thing I have to say was the most uh, disappointing thing was that uh, the game was played in Nice. This was kind of a marquee matchup and there are barely 15,000 fans in the stadium. That I found really, really, really disappointing. But you know, we already saw relatively empty seats uh, for England, Scotland in the same stadium. So yeah, I guess England fans are not yet traveling in droves to um, France. They should. England looked really, really strong. In the second half, you know, the teams kind of let loose a little bit. I had the feeling England did only what was necessary. They had basically the group win secured. I mean, if Japan would have um, won against England, then they would have uh, gotten the group win. But I think England knew that they're good enough that whatever happens, they will. Uh, they could always get that goal. And it was just at the moment when Japan had actually a good uh, equalizing chance that right <laughs> on the direct counter-attack, if you like. Uh, Ellen White gets the ball and with, in German, you say, without any humor, puts it in. It was a very dry shot into the net. 2-0. And yeah, that's the celebration. I actually liked after her first goal, uh, she, celebra uh, she first put her goggles on from uh, Modest from Cologne at least a few years ago. She takes inspiration from there. And then afterwards, she really was celebrating. It was, it, it was a nice touch. So England wins and Japan, as we'll, or, uh, we'll see, I mean, uh, despite the loss, they were already uh, secured a spot in the next round. But what spot would it be? That would depend on the second match and what a match it was. Let me say from, from the beginning, this was the most unexpected jersey matchup. Scotland, England, uh, Scotland, or Argentina. What would, would you expect, given what you've seen so far? You would expect Scotland in their navy kit, and Argentina, given they have such a white kit, they're more or less white, you know, with just little blue stripes. Seemingly, two blue tones cannot be um, clashing on the shirts. Even though one is a very light blue, and the other one is a very dark blue, it's just an impossibility for FIFA. So what do we do? We have Scotland playing their away kit in pink with navy shorts and Argentina. And this is a shirt that I had in my jersey review. I did not see this one coming. Pretty nice shirt. Navy blue Argentina away shirt. And I assume it's the same design as um, uh, Sweden and Scotland use, except that it had white side stripes. Um, right off the bat, I would give this eight stars. Just letting you know, uh, this is a pretty nice looking kit. It's an eight star kit. <laughs> Should do. <laughs> need to update. Anyway, uh, the game was all Scotland for most of the time. Um, not too unexpected. I mean, Scotland is more robust than no Oscar. Uh, Argentina is a fighting team, and we saw this against Japan. We saw this already against England. Our 
the Argentine is a tough, a tough opponent to break down. A little bit different than the men's team, and I hope that the men take some cues from the women's team for tonight's game. Anyway, Scotland actually gets the lead in the first half. Um, I think we deserve it so through little in the 19th minute, right after halftime. Uh, kind of weak defending by Argentina. BD makes it 49, in the 49th, makes it 2 0, and when Cuthbert in the 69th makes it 3 0 for Scotland. You think Scotland is cruising? It actually looks pretty uh, good because at that point they have three points and they have a plus two goal differential. Given that uh, Nigeria is the other own team, third plus team at the moment, the three points and minus two, Scotland would look pretty pretty good uh, to advance because even the other th uh, third plus team that are sitting at zero points at minus three minus five, Cameroon, Chile, that would have seen Scotland more or less through. But never count out uh, Argentina. Five minutes later, Menendez makes it 3 1. Okay, big deal. Alexander scores an own goal in the 79th. Now it gets close. And then the real, um, how to say, controversy began. First of all, uh, Argentina player is pretty clearly brought down in the box, but the referee says play on. VAR decides, have a second look at it. It's pretty clear it's a penalty. I think we don't need to discuss that one. Then Bonsegundo steps up, shoots, and the penalty is saved by the goalkeeper. Uh, pretty, pretty good save. I, I would say I mean, that the penalty wasn't was a shot very, very, very hard, but still, you gotta make the save. However, VAR also intervenes and I'm starting to hate this rule too. The goalkeeper, when the ball is shot, needs to have a foot on the ground. When the ball is shot, the goalkeeper was jumping in the air. Or just left the air. So they don't comply to the rule. It is reviewed. And it's 3-3. Let me see. I'm cautiously happy for Argentina, although I think um, I feel with Scotland, you know. Milan fan, I know how it is to, lo to give up a 3 0 lead. You know this already. Uh, that rule is bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. No goalkeeper. I mean, if you have a foot on the line, how the heck are you supposed to save? You need to jump. I mean, this was not a jump forward, this was a jump up. And even if, I mean, if you look, it is just millimeters. I think this is just getting too ridiculous. I like VAR. I think VAR is there, but use common sense. You should make common sense rules and not idiotic rules that completely destroy the game. The, the offside bugs me to the core. The constant handballs, I think, are just insane. And now this goalkeeping rule. Can we look at fouls like... Um, Serbia, Switzerland, when Mitrovic was pulled down by two Swiss in the box and that is not reviewed. That was a clear penalty. But some of those hand penalties, give me a break. Um, I said it when the World Cup final was called that given how the referees have been calling handball, that the handball in the final was a handball. But before that I would never have said this is a handball. And we have seen it all season long. I think the fans need to speak up here. We want VAR. Most of us want VAR. It can't even take long. I don't mind play some commercials or whatever. Just show us what the referee is doing. But don't, don't be so pedantic. That's what drives me nuts. The game ends 3-3. And yeah, this means Argentina finishes third and has a slim chance of advancing. Slim, because if you look now at the third place uh, rankings, uh, Argentina sits there with two points and all teams that could be now in third place it's Cameroon, New Zealand and Chile and Thailand they have zero points so if there are two draws then those can get only at most one point and Argentina would be through. Nigeria sits so for me honestly I think there will be a win between those two I think Chile will beat Thailand. Nigeria sits for me on the bubble and I don't know what Cameron New Zealand will do. So um, 
given that I think Nigeria will probably land ahead of Chile. You gotta make up with, I mean, yeah, 3 0 against Thailand is probably in there. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be definitely, definitely tight. Uh, but it's gonna be interesting. The only thing we know so far is Brazil and China are through. That's the only thing we know. Nigeria has a good chance. I think Argentina, the two points, is not enough. Also, let's see how this sets up for the knockout stage. Uh, what do we know already? We know Germany will play the third place team from A, C, or D. So that's Nigeria, that's Brazil, that's Argentina, so rather not Argentina. So Nigeria or uh, Brazil, that's a pretty big swing. Norway plays Australia, then we have England against the third place team from Group B, that's uh, third place team from Group B. That is uh, China at the uh, China or E and F, which yeah, well, I, those are the four teams. France can only play against the third place team from Group C or E already. Um, C is Brazil, E to be decided. Spain against the winner of Group F, most likely the U.S., maybe Sweden. Um, the next matchups will be decided tomorrow. Italy against the third place team of Group A or B, that is Nigeria. Or that's China. It looks maybe a little bit more likely to be China, but let's see. And the winners of Group E, Canada, Netherlands will play Japan. If I look at the bracket, I have to say that the upper part of the bracket uh, looks to be the tougher one, especially if the US win the group. We have Norway, Australia. Um, again, uh, will Norway, Australia will play the winner from England against the third place team. Then France against Spain, US. So that's France, US, and Norway, Australia against England. Uh, setting up, let's go just perform either an England, France, or England, United States semi final. I mean, those are really big teams. When I look on the other side, Italy, let's say Italy plays Brazil, even if. Um, no, Italy cannot play Brazil. Italy plays China. Uh, that's not that big of a matchup anymore. Uh, Japan against the winners of Group B, let's say Canada, so Italy or China against Canada doesn't sound that big. Germany seems to get the benefit of the doubt on Germany, potentially Brazil, and then um, Sweden against the Netherlands, you know. The US gets in there with Germany, US, uh, it's just, especially the, uh, the quadrant around Italy doesn't seem as strong from the get-go, but maybe I'm underestimating the Canadians. We'll see. I actually would expect tomorrow that the Canadians beat the Dutch to secure first place, although you never know. But the Dutch have everything but convincing, have everything but convincing. And I think the US will beat Sweden and will get this very weird bracket, like at the last World Cup, but hey, so be it. It's gonna be definitely be interesting all the way through. Anyway, let me know what you thought about tonight's game. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.